Park Waste Management Strategy. So, members, this will take a little bit of time, and I make no apologies for that because it has taken a lot of time to get to this stage. I want to um, welcome Julie and Ian, who are here at the table, and I want to warmly thank Councillor Cooper and Councillor Walker um, and Councillor Newman, who were and on Glenn. the panel. We seem to have spent... Glenn, Glenn Cox. Hang on, hang on. I'm Sorry. just going to get to that. I was going to talk separately about Sorry. Glenn. <laughs> Just couldn't leave out Glenn. Thank you for the enthusiasm from the sidelines. Um, so Councillor Cooper, Councillor Newman and Councillor Walker, who spent a huge amount of time listening to the submissions and doing this work. From the um, Independent Māori Statutory Board, Glenn Wilcox was invaluable. And I talked to Glenn last night, who sends his um, aroha for the work today, but he's going to leave it in the capable hands of the IMSB members who are here to make comment and we'll talk to some of that at the end of the presentation. Um, I, and this is somewhat odd, but it's my name on the report as chair of the hearings panel, which is the hearings process, so I will <coughs> present the report. Um, I just need Tan here, so Twenty. Okay, I'll just get you to change it. So just as by way of introduction and reminding people that we're here today to approve the plan and this will guide the next six years of our work as Zero Waste Auckland. And as I said, we've undertaken an extensive process to get to this point. We received 6,759 submissions to the draft waste management plan, including 4,065 pro forma submissions um, from the Auckland Ratepayers Alliance. Submissions came from all parts of Auckland and all sectors, including community groups, business, the waste industry, recycling industry, young people and Māori. And that's what we want to touch on at the end. We had an unprecedented number of submissions from Māori. Um, also, we had, I think for the first time in a submission process like this, the voice of children and young people. We had our primary school students from Mount Albert Primary, our rangatahi from Te Kuru, Kaupapa, um, Māori, Ohone, Waititi Marae, and submissions were, by way of oral presentation, given in Te Reo Māori, all expressing strong support for the actions of zero waste. And, as I say, we'll touch on that at the end. As a hearings panel, we heard around 50 oral submissions and had feedback from 12 local boards. And we've reflected on these submissions and are proposing a number of amendments. And I know this does seem, as part of a waste minimisation programme, there is quite a lot of paper for those of you who've got the agenda um, printed out on this. But we wanted to show people what the panel discussed and then give you the marked up copy of the plan so you can actually see where the changes were made and where we've actually altered in response to the submissions. In 2012, we adopted an aspirational goal of zero waste by two, 2040, and that seemed a long way away. And I just want to acknowledge Councillor Nolene Raffles, who led that process and did it with a huge passion and bless Nolene for the work that she did. But six years later, we're in quite a different place and we're having discussions in the media and on social media that we've never had before. We've got the community absolutely up in arms around plastic and we've got everybody talking about waste minimisation. We've got extraordinary stuff happening, whether it's the banning of straws or the banning of um, mm. food waste from some of our <laughs> Um, restaurants and places like that, we've got restaurants where you can actually go and eat food that's been salvaged. I mean, this is an extraordinary time for waste. And in practical terms, we've made some headway in our residential collections and in our own corporate waste practices. So we're getting the right systems in place, but there is a lot more to be done, <coughs> and we'll continue dealing with these challenges along the way. You know, it's no understatement to say we're a huge city and rolling out one service to our urban and rural diverse communities is a massive undertaking. And welcome to the Mayor, 
um, illegal dumping and littering are still huge issues that we're dealing with, but we've tackled <coughs> those headlong, including our mayor abseiling down the side of, I'm not too sure that he abseiled, we like to think he abseiled being a man of action, but he was <laughs> down the side <laughs> of the road getting tyres out of, um, out of um, holes, which I think is a wonderful thing to do. So we're keeping on innovating and learning and hopefully bringing elected members, our staff, industry, mana whenua and NGOs and communities along with us. So just quickly touching on the submission process, we had 2,000 individually prepared submissions and the majority expressed support for our proposed approach. Um, by contrast, the majority of the pro forma internet submissions, which were pretty broad brush, but they opposed the plan and they were all from the and Ratepayers Alliance. The most common points that came up in submissions were strong support for the direction of the plan, increase for the waste levy, advocating for product stewardship and council focusing on 80% on the 80% of the commercial waste stream that we don't have control right. over. In addition, there was lots of comments about the food scraps collection and we were all reminded of the importance of local solutions and community-led approaches <coughs> investing in education and behaviour change. And as I said, a huge concern about plastic and how it ends up in our marine environment. We were also um, pushed to needing to do more and um, to work harder in the construction and demolition waste area. Building a relationship with industry is something that the plan highlights and this certainly came through in the submissions. We also had really useful contributions from business that work in the Waste and Recycling Centre and encouraging us to work more closely together. And we, we are keen to do that. Local boards have supported the plan and have come up with some really good ideas about how to work more closely with our waste team. And the key areas that stimulated the most discussion, as I said, were the food scraps collection, refuse collection, weekly versus fortnightly, illegal dumping, litter, marine waste, hazardous waste and the management of clean fills and the role of council and the section 17a review so we've considered all these views and um, and also our obligations under the waste minimization act we've balanced these with our leadership role in council and um, trying to come up with a waste plan that works for our community and our environment and as a panel we've made the recommendations that we'll discuss shortly so just going through the hang on, we should be in better independent group chat, so we might have just moved along. <coughs> yeah, oh, sorry, we're there. Slide three. This is quite long, but it's I tip there's two reasons for doing it. Number one, take people through the process. Number two, <coughs> this is a process that has many legal fish hooks and a lot of legal interest. And we are making sure that every I is dotted and T is crossed. And this actually requires me to take you through the plan and the process by which the decisions were made. So yes, we are just on slide three. Visions and goals and objectives. We've recommended no substantial change to the visions, goals and objectives. And the zero waste by 2040 remains the driver of the plan. But we have added some modified text to emphasise that we want to work closely with industry to actually make this happen and to minimise commercial waste. The draft proposes eight priority actions and we've added a number nine and I'll explain that in a little while. Advocacy on increased waste levy, strong overall support for increasing the waste levy and this isn't just in Auckland, this is around New Zealand and certainly at a ministerial level this is being discussed at the moment. Advocacy for product stewardship, there's strong support for council to advocate to central government for product stewardship and thinking of things like tyres that the mayor's been heavily involved in. If you don't put money in at the beginning, it's very hard to get them back into the system. The panel recommended that council seeks to be included with central government in the design, however, of, container, of um, product stewardship container deposit legislation to reflect community needs. Number three. Once again, there was strong support for council to focus on 80% of commercial waste that we don't have control over, but there was some concern from the waste industry about council's role in this space, that, that real issue of we can look over the horizon and see that we need to do more, but we can't get in there and um, work against the waste industry. So we recommended modifying the... Um, to emphasise Council's role as a facilitator and a partner 
not a provider of services in the commercial space. Number four, strong support was expressed for our community recycling centres and, resource, and the resource recovery network and submitters included the, the local boards who told us they wanted much more than the 12 CRCs that are budgeted for in the long-term plan. And so as a panel, we've identified the need to review the priorities, budget and role of council in the delivery of the CRCs. And we also note that the budget um, will be considered through the 10-year budget and also in the 17A review. Number five, um, these are areas where there's more discussion and we'll go into a bit more detail on that. Number um, seven, panel recommends that the plan note the important role elected members can play in advocating for and making sure the council does actually reduce its waste and looks to its procurement practices to influence that. We actually pu purchase $4 billion worth of um, product and services each year. We can make a big difference to the waste stream by focusing on that. Eight, partner with others to deliver um, zero waste. The plan strongly emphasises the need to work together with the private sector, community, Māori and mana whenua, and it was also really good to see submissions from our bids, our business improvement districts who want to work with council on the issue of waste, and they were really strongly passionate about that issue. Right, next slide, Mary. So priority number five, this is about the transition, the discussion about transitioning from um, our collection of curbside waste and it's about continuing our three bin service. So that's the pay as you throw, recycling and the food scraps collection. There was a lot of discussion with the panel members and the uh, submitters about the weekly versus fortnightly and concerns were raised by submitters that we'd be moving to a fortnightly collection and that was certainly picked up in media and social media. And we recommended that we need to offer more flexibility to support communities through that transition and change as we get the food scraps collection up and running to allow people to adapt to the food scraps collection, how that changes their behaviour and the amount of refuse that they put out. And in the meantime, we'll keep a weekly food um, we'll keep a weekly waste collection to a food scraps collection as well embedded. Um, we do need to remember though, members, that this will impact on the budgets. So that will be coming to a finance meeting discussion at some stage. Recycling services, the situation in China and the restricting of recycling that can be sent overseas um, was raised by, mem by submitters and we've recommended a new action be added that council work with central government and other local authorities to explore what manufacturing infrastructure should be supported to develop new markets and recyclable materials in New Zealand. And this is a really big issue that through waste mins, um, I was down there in Wellington um, with Ian last week, we've got councils and the and industry and the waste industry fully engaged in this issue. We've had lots of comments on the food scraps collection and composting, with the majority of submitters giving qualified support to the service. Most people strongly support um, diverting food from landfill, but it's the, it's the how-to that raised the most comments. The idea of a targeted rate um, and the user pays service that we discussed through the LTP has been adopted. There was discussion about an opt-out clause, but we've advocated against that. And so you'll see the change in the plan that removes the opt-out clause, cl clause, and that's not recommended. <coughs> the targeted rate for the regional rollout of the food scraps collection um, will be rolled out to all areas. And uh, as I said, that's been approved in the LTP. Thank you very much, councillors. And we did recommend some other minor changes to this section, including... Um, just making sure that we talked about valuing the nutrients in food scraps. This isn't just a waste product, it's actually a valuable product, and including support for redistribution of food through food rescue initiatives as a fourth approach to food waste. Slide. Illegal dumping. Um, I mentioned there'd been a huge amount of concern about illegal dumping, particularly the southern boards, and our direction in this area is that this work be elevated to a ninth priority 
and included um, in work that's been done across council to coordinate these issues and also to include marine waste. And this is an area that we work closely with our local boards on to develop local solutions. Waste Solutions have also increased their budget by 200,000 to deal with litter and illegal dumping initiatives. And you'll see later on in our agenda, we actually <coughs> deal with the um, litter issue as far as legislation goes. This one is hazardous medical and sanitary waste. And this was an area that needed to be strengthened. And we certainly heard from industry the highlighting the risks around dealing with um, hazardous waste, especially lithium batteries, and also sanitary and medical waste. And we've amended actions to work more closely with the industry on picking up these issues relating to classification and disposal of medical and sanitary waste as part of the waste bylaw review. And we're also developing in, in partnership with the industry a plan on household hazardous waste to address batteries and other items slide is clean fill and managed fill. This is particularly an issue for our rural boards, being Franklin and Rodney. And this is primarily, primarily controlled through the Auckland Unitary Plan. And any changes to the planning rules will need to be made through a plan change process. But following the sign off of the plan, the Solid Waste Bylaw um, 2012 will be reviewed to assure, ensure alignment with the plan. So possibly licensing clean fills, currently not a requirement, will be reviewed through that process. 17A, um, some submitters challenged the draft plan in relation to cost effectiveness review being undertaken under 17A, particular Northland Waste, Waste Management New Zealand and the Auckland Race Payers, Rate Payers Alliance. However, due to the time frames, we need to adopt this plan by the 30th of June 2018, but we've been really clear and we stated publicly that the 17A review can still feed into this plan and recommendations from the 17A review can modify and moderate the plan, so we just need to be really clear about that. Just finally, the um, Te Kapa Moana, Hauraki Gulf Islands draft waste plan um, received good support from island residents and the Waiheke and Great Barrier local boards and based on the feedback there are some very minor changes, in particular the change of the Waiheke Community Recycling Centre to the Community Resource Recovery Park. So, in summary, the panel were really impressed with the wide range of submissions and the specific in-depth view given in a number of areas. It enabled us to provide guidance for more clarity in areas of the plan, and the revisions don't significantly change the strategic direction. And overall, the submission process and many of the issues raised will also help guide the Waste Solutions team, who were there in force to listen to the submissions, um, and Jenny and Sophine and George and the wider team that were there day after day, thank you for your attention to detail. None of the wisdom from our community will be wasted. I just want to end on, are we going to play the, this is a, um, a video from um, our Kura Kaupapa Māori at Hwani Waititi Marae at Isen Te Reo. And I will invite, perhaps after the video, and sorry Renata and James, I didn't forewarn you, but I just wondered if you wished to comment and perhaps just translate the pithy take out from this and then add from the Te Ao Māori um, IMSB perspective anything that you would like to add to the discussions. Just play the, play the video. We were particularly taken with this <laughs> video. <laughs> え、ハラテネイテイ。ロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロロ
And that is our challenge from our future generations. And I think we need to respect that and take that seriously. Kia ora. Do you want a translation? Yeah. I yes, think please. a lot of it is clear, but of, of the essence. I, I wouldn't mind a, a, a short translation, Madam Chair, if that's possible. Councillor Walker, your wish is our command. I'll Very it, short. I'll keep it short sure. for you, uh, Councillor. <coughs> <laughs> uh, they just opened up with it's not a request or a plea. Um, it's a challenge um, to everybody uh, around waste management. And um, they're putting that before us as uh, the key leadership and decision makers uh, of the city um, to start. Um, and they referred to Papa Tuanuku as their mother. Um, and would you throw your rubbish and pollute uh, in, on your mother? Um, because in their world, uh, that goes against all their cultural uh, values. Um, and they ended by saying they put the challenge to us in terms of a waste management plan for everybody to take um, ownership of it, uh, personal ownership, and they ended by saying tamatu tama ora, which means the person uh, who stands will be healthy. Um, tama noho tama mate means if you do nothing, um, then you will submit to death. So it was just a, a traditional um, traditional saying in order to be proactive, do something, to do nothing is to, um, is to, is to lie down and, and face death. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thank you, Madam Chair. Really appreciate that. Thank you. So let's just, we'll just see if we've got any <coughs> additions from our staff and then basically we'll take questions. Ian, Julie. Um, no, I don't think there's anything to add at this stage. Okay, right. We've gone through pretty much everything. We'll take any questions of clarification. Councillor Cooper. And then um, Councillor mine was Walker just not a question, if you don't mind, Madam Chair. One of those young men, um, Link Hitaraka, the boy in the middle part, um, <coughs> his late father, Wuramu Hitaraka, was um, Kamatua up at Parangatahi Maraya Massey and also on our ta Tamata Runanga in Waitakere City Council. And I just was so proud. I saw him the other night at our husband's birthday. But um, to see the leadership still coming through, the Whakapapa backed his dad and the great things he did. And this young man's only 15 and a bit shy, but um, being willing to stand up um, and give us that challenge. And I feel very proud of that young boy. He lost his dad four years ago. And um, he's you know, standing up for what he believes in with his, um, with his friends and his classmates at, um, from the Kura of Waini Waititi. So I just wanted to acknowledge Wurumu Hitaraka and um, his father. Kura ora. Thank you. Councillor Walker. Sure. Um, got a few, um, few questions and there, there might be one or two changes from the questions. Um, the, the first question is, is just about around zero waste, uh, making the assumption that we're talking about zero waste generally, not just zero waste to landfill. So I just want to clarify that first. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think to, to clarify that, there's a, a waste hierarchy and it's about um, actually not creating the waste in the first place. Okay, that's all good. Uh, the other um, question that I want to ask just goes to the suggestion of the weekly um, collection ongoing and one particular anomaly, which is the Hibiscus Coast and Rodney, that is effectively not covered because there isn't a service provided by council. And my question is around the possibility there of conceivably a two-weekly service um, as a, a better-than-nothing um, option that, that might be um, introduced. So my question is, is around this um, flexibility of the, of the weekly in a situation where there isn't 
any service. Um, <clears throat> through the chair, I'm, I'm probably not able to give a definitive answer on that. We are looking at um, how we provide a, um, a service within the former Rodney area. The, um, uh, one of the key things is around that consistency, um, but, but mindful that, <coughs> that people will, will react and respond differently. So we, we're seeing behavior at the moment on the North Shore where uh, bins are going out um, uh, less than fortnightly. Um, sorry, more than fortnightly, if that makes sense. So, so yeah, uh, so, so people are actually getting into the habit of putting out bins out every other week. But we recognize that, that some people are putting them out weekly and other people will put them out monthly. So um, I think it's, it's probably work in progress, looking at that business case around how we can uh, move into other areas and create that service for, for residents. So I, I'm assuming the answer is a yes, that there is some flexibility. Certainly the way that we provide the service at the moment is that we can give that flexibility. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other question I've got just goes to um, encouraging home composting where possible. We had a significant number of submissions that went to a variation on that, which is community composting. Is that implicit within home composting? And perhaps if it's, if it's really not, if we were to adjust the wording to encourage home, encourage home and community composting where possible. Yeah, th through, through the chair, I think it is intended to pick that up. Again, there's a bit of a hierarchy around food waste, first of all, minimizing it, but also looking at localized solutions, so either at home or <coughs> within the localized community. So, so that's a, a very small suggested change, <coughs> Madam Chair. That's a good one. And then the other question I've got goes to cleanful waste. Is cleanful waste identified within the hierarchy of waste and and captured in terms of the um, tonnage, particularly given the fact that some of the cleanful waste is really not cleanful waste, it's um, obviously a significant amount of it is construction and demolition waste. Um, the, the way that we report, it's not classed as landfill. It, 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 so clean fill is classed as, um, I think we classed it as recovered waste. So it, it's not in the figures that we use for landfill. But I think we recognize that um, the classification of sites um, and also how we treat and um, manage those sites, uh, there are areas for improvement. And I think that's... That, that's why it's raised specifically in the in the plan here about sure. how how we look through our bylaw and our consenting process to improve that. So uh, I'm just raising that as an issue for action. We've got a huge amount of construction and demolition waste that should be recovered, valuable concrete, other materials that are, are valuable that are effectively yep. being landfilled. Yep. And in respect of that, there's a a solid waste bylaw 2012 that's being um, reviewed. What's the timeline on that? And is that going to be in sync with our action plan here? Yep, so through, through the chair, what we did last year, at last time, we got the plan approved in June, and then the bylaw was approved uh, in October. So once we've got this plan approved, it then allows us to, um, to review that. So um, I think the timeline is for later this year to, 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 uh, to renew that. Thank you. Thank you. And totally agree with your points about construction and demolition waste, Councillor. That's one of our real biggies, remembering we don't have total control over that waste stream. So it is a focus we want to tackle, hence the need for increasing the levy, more money back into the system so we can tackle that. It's a real biggie for us. Councillor Casey and then the Mayor. Um, I want to take issue with an amendment to the plan, which is about resource recovery centres. In the plan that went out for consultation, we applauded our five current resource recovery centres and the good job they're doing. That's Waiuku, Helensville, Devonport, Henderson and Whangaparoa. We talked about the seven that are rolling out over the next six years, including the next one, which is in my ward. Looking forward to it. But then I also recall an alternative conversation we had in another forum with regard to 
Council owning and managing those resource recovery centres. And I see that the change to the plan as it's going out is to look at alternatives to that. In other words, privatising it. And I'm, I'm not supportive of that. And I just wondered, to, I want to make sure that all my colleagues have seen this in here because there was quite a debate in the other forum <coughs> about whether we, we would want to see that or not. And if everybody's happy with it, that's fine. I'll just vote against that. But I'm not sure how we can do that in the... In the um, do I just vote against A? Well, first of all, can, can I get some feedback maybe through the chair? Yeah. I'm looking at our page, sorry, our page 102. And we're adding in a bit that says, include a review of priorities, budget, including alternate funding sources, which is fine, and the role of the council and other parties in the delivery of CRCs, which means that we're not fully supportive of them continuing in council ownership <coughs> and management. I'm on our page. I'll get, I'll get Ian and Julie to comment. My understanding of that okay. is this is us working in partnership with community organisations. So thinking of, you know, the one that I know the it's best that's, this offered, that's operated forever, we work in partnership with the community organisation, the NPHS community organisation. So I think I'll get Ian and Julie to clarify, but I think, Councillor, that's not... That's not what we mean. Remembering, though, as part of the 17A review, councillors, that you voted for us to spend a large slug of money reviewing the efficacy of CRCs. Uh, yeah, th th through the chair. Um, sorry, I'm struggling to find the actual yeah. page. I think I have a slightly yeah, different it's not not a page number. It, it is it's in the open attachment, which open attachment it shows you all the changes to the plan. <coughs> that we are voting on, and one of the changes on, is on page 102 of that. It's added a sentence to it, which I don't think... It's not in my from what I have, Well, I don't know what... OK. Doing. Why don't we... Let, let's just perhaps take some of the other speakers. We'll, um, we'll just track that down, maybe, as Julie goes through, and we've got... Sorry, Margot, I've got a whole bunch of other speakers <coughs> before okay. you. No, We've no, got um, Councillor Bartley. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair, and through you. Um, thank you for your presentation. I just had a general question. Um, has Council ever done an audit of itself of how it's going to achieve or how it's been trying to achieve zero waste uh, or be environmentally friendly, or is that something that's going to drop out of this plan, this work? Um, through the chair, so two of the key actions relate very much to, to council around um, reducing the curbside waste and kilos per, per um, uh, head of population. Um, and the target um, is set based on rolling out new services. So um, we've reduced um, uh, household waste by 10% per person and that's due to go down to um, another 20%. Um, and so that's the target set for the next three years. So very much so, we, we, have, we, we know all that information and we, we measure and monitor that on an ongoing basis. Also across the, the council buildings as well, we've set our own internal waste target around waste from um, our own cafes and offices. And that, that target uh, was set at 30% and that was achieved fairly early on in the um, in the current waste plan, and we've reviewed that target to actually give a stretch target of a further 30% reduction. So we, we, we know those figures and we monitor them closely. Um, so, so the answer is, is yes. As far as getting to zero waste, meaning zero, then zero waste is, is an aspiration. I think we recognise that at the moment um, we're looking to do it in chunks as we do the six-year waste plan. Okay, thank you. I, 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 I don't think we are, but I, I'm just really trying to get council to walk its own talk here, because yeah. it isn't um, from what I've seen in local board land and <coughs> with the people that we, the groups that we fund and all that stuff. And I, I, and I remember seeing a photo on Facebook from the Auckland Art Gallery where they had the obliteration exhibition and it was in the, in the tip. So see, we've got to walk our own talk. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Couldn't agree more. Um, Member Brown. 
Yeah, so um, um, I too acknowledge the presence of um, Member Wilcox. Uh, absolutely support his contribution uh, that he's made through the process. But I'm keen to understand how the plan addresses breach um, in so far as the ongoing, whether it's industrial or the like, of waste. Uh, discard and disposal into the region and because it looks as if from a compliance perspective it's quite reactive outside in the field i.e. And, and I do appreciate the new comms set up but that even that's reactive oh, I've just seen someone dump and then everybody's reacting so does the plan address breach what what is the process and what is the and where's the framework from which compliance is upheld or at least addressed when it isn't out there in the field um, I just drove past I, I didn't stop to count them but in the rural areas there's still tires and many streams mm -hmm. um, and so I just want to understand how the plan not just educate South City, but it also has a very clear understanding about the process of breach and what the and what the consequences are. Do you have a comment? Uh, yep, through the chair, I can I can comment on that. Um, actually, we we have another item on the agenda which looks at reviewing the the Litter Act. So at the moment, our our action um, are based around the Litter Act. So we can. Um, so w w you're right, we, we take a, 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 a broad <coughs> approach. We look at the education awareness and, and advising uh, residents who sometimes get it wrong. Um, uh, and um, w we encourage people to do the right thing about disposing of their waste. We have enforcement powers. We have enforcement officers who will inspect um, illegal dumping piles, black bags in streams on the berm. Um, and we can fine, um, uh, depending on the size, the severity, and whether it's a first offence, anything from $100 to $400. Or in serious cases, we can um, go through the courts, through the Litter Act, um, and there's potentially a fine of, if it's through the Litter Act, up to $30,000 for a business. Um, thank you. Th uh, 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 I just don't like that term. You know, litter act feels like somebody's just chucked a box of matches on the road. Where I'm talking about, you know, truckloads of tyres and other stuff. Um, so under the waste management then, or and manage and minimisation, is that not held in an act of sorts? I just wonder if we, because our next item, item ten, is around the litter act, which I agree is, you know. Three truckloads of tyres on the side of the road doesn't feel like litter. It feels like an abomination. But I wonder if we can pick up the what teeth do we have discussion as part of the Litter Act, Member Brown. Okay. Yeah, not particularly satisfying, but I can see what it is you're wanting to unpack. Okay, Councillor Sayers. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, I take it with just questions, Madam Chair. That's not yep. okay. Thank you very much. Um, so, a couple of questions. First one just goes back to um, the clean, full and the manage full um, slide that you, that you presented and that there's a concern particularly around for the uh, Rodney and Franklin local boards and, and that basically that's controlled by the unitary plan, Madam Chair, which you pointed out to us and perhaps a plan change could, could look at some uh, potential changes there. So, and then it, so, my first question will be around that. And the second one's around the next line about the uh, the licensing of clean full sites, just to better understand what that licensing is and what um, you know, shape that might take. So perhaps I'll, I'll deliver both questions to you now. So so if you could just elaborate on what that licensing, that review of the bylaw is hoping to achieve in terms of the license, perhaps the licensing side of things, and then the unitary plan and potential plan change there. Um, 
in that process, uh, um, what I'm really thinking about there is the roads, Madam Chair, being, you know, the way that they're getting um, hammered with, um, in both districts at the moment, and how a plan change process, um, how we intend to perhaps address where the best sites might be and the controls the, around that. For the use of this, I think we just need to talk about the, the tool. I don't want us to get into a wider discussion around clean fills. It's just what we're proposing here with regard to clean fill management. So, Madam just so it's unclear on, on your yep. direction there. Exactly. Um, the, so, the, so, can I put the question in terms of the involvement of how we can input into that um, potential plan change involvement of Auckland Transport, the process there, and the local board's process in terms of coming up with some suggestions? Through the chair, I'm not sure if I can really answer that actually. Um, from a waste point of view, we have the opportunity through the waste bylaw. Okay. Um, and the process will be um, um, looking at the current regulations and the bylaw um, to, to start that, as I said earlier to, to Councillor Walker, um, once we've got the waste plan approved, to, to look at actually how we can enact the waste plan by using the bylaw. So um, I think we will come back soon with, a, with another paper to, to start those discussions. Mm, okay. And, that's, and um, around the, I guess it's another committee or other officers, I probably need to talk to about, it, about the input. Into, I've, I've had a quick chat with the Deputy Mayor just before. I think you might have some work underway there, Bill, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And any discussion about a plan change <coughs> or amendment to the unitary <coughs> plan around um, clean fills would, would come back for, for much wider discussion. This is just signalling that to address the concerns that people have around clean fills, we're wanting to tighten up. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Cashmore. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Ian, just refresh my memory and perhaps those of others around this table. Within Auckland's boundaries, what's the capacity for landfill in a number of years at current rates of disposal within our boundaries? Uh, so within our boundaries, so that would include Whitford and Redvale. Um, so I guess there's capacity and then what's what it, they're consented for. Mm. Um, I think the current consents go up to around another 10 years. Okay. So time is not our friend necessarily, but there, are, there is capacity beyond our boundaries. But <coughs> how will the other areas north and south want to receive Auckland's rubbish is another point. Um, of tonnage, total tonnage going to landfill now, um, what percentage is commercial waste, concrete, timber, steel? Um, I think we have a breakdown in the plan of... So, um, uh, uh, I think it's around 40% of the, of the total. S so, I, I guess the key message is, which is why we're advocating for um, looking at an increase in the waste levy to, to generate um, investment in new infrastructure to, to, to make that more commercially viable, to pull out timber, to pull out construction and demolition waste, to pull out organic waste. So. Um, I think the, um, the the information shows that a lot of what goes in a landfill is can be recovered. Uh, just at the moment, the economics don't stack up. And am I right in recollecting there's half a million tyres a year sold in Auckland? No, not, not sure on that number. This number springs to my head for some reason. It's something like that, I think. And the last qu question, second last question, is about um, the green waste that currently goes to landfill. So if someone's putting out their stuff to go to landfill, they don't have a green waste bin. What is that of an average household of their, you know, the, to landfill? Uh, so, th th um, for the waste, that, so the waste audits that we do, so the waste that we, we handle, um, the average bin or bag contains around 10% garden waste, which would equate to around probably 20,000 tonnes. 10% and how much would be food scraps on top of that? For, or food scraps is, and then on top of that uh, is 45%. Yeah, so so uh, more than half of a bin or a bag is, yeah. is organic waste. And my, my last question is, is to do with the capacity of the um, the food waste industry, and I've visited three of them now, about what they're doing with their technology and their level to, the ability to expand. So how is that progressing? So we've been doing um, soft market testing uh, recently, talking to a number of players um, who probably aren't the traditional organic processes. Um, 
but, but actually things like the, the, the dairy industry, the meat industry, who are actually probably dealing with their own commercial um, organic waste. We, um, we're looking at what those options could be, which could be around building on existing capacity and existing plant, but also looking at, at new sites as well. Um, once we've got this signed off, and, and obviously we've got approval through the LTP to progress with the food waste collections, and we want to get that service in place now that we've got Papakura up and running in place across the region over the next uh, two to three years, um, we need to progress pretty quickly with those processing options. So the, the plan is actually to come to the Strategic Procurement Committee in the next month or so to, um, to, to, uh, to list out what those options are and the timelines. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Deputy Mayor. Mayor Goff. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I've just got uh, two questions, both relating to fine-tuning of our inorganic collection, uh, the annual inorganic collection. Um, absolutely accept that the old system was messy, untidy, um, unsatisfactory. Um, but the two areas of fine tuning I want to ask about, uh, the first is the restriction on the quantum <coughs> that you can put out for inorganic. I think it's a square meter or approximately a trailer load. Um, I was on a Neat Streets project in Otara a couple of weeks ago and I saw what people were pulling out um, and wow, it was way in excess of what we allow them to put out annually. I'm wondering why we are so tight in constraining the amount that people can put out because you know, if you've got to replace a, a, a double bed or a, a sofa or whatever, you've, you've got to replace it, you've got to do something with it. So. To what extent are you ready to ease the constraints on how much you can put out in, in organic collections, which I think is important? And the second thing is notification. When you had the stuff out on the street, you didn't need to notify because as soon as somebody put it out, everybody put it out. But people often complain to me they, they didn't notice it, they didn't read it online. Um, what have we done to ensure that people are more aware of when the inorganic collection is going to take place so that they can put their rubbish out. Yeah. So th through the chair, um, yes, we are flexible on the one cubic metre. The one cubic metre was um, really established uh, when we went to the regionalised service, the on-property service, uh, the legacy councils tended to promote that one cubic metre. We've tried to move away from talking about one cubic metre and actually trying to, to show in a visual way what, what potentially an average pile would look like, recognising, and this is where the collectors are, are flexible, recognising that yeah, uh, uh, um, a, a double bed might not be one cubic metre would, but, but would still be collected. The, 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 the sensitivity is around, um, obviously, the, the price or the cost of the service is linked to how many collections can be done in a day, so obviously the bigger the pile, it, obviously it takes longer to collect, but also what can fit in the vehicles as well. So we are working with our contractor, um, but I, I'm, um, I think we've seen this year that definitely those collectors are a lot more flexible about what, about what they take. Uh, as far as the promotion, we've continued to do a big push, um, a lot on social media uh, and, and generally in, in media channels. We've also, um, our community partners who we fund to do a lot of waste minimization work have been door knocking as well in areas of low participation. And we've actually found that, um, so in the last, uh, so we're about 10 weeks into the collections uh, this year, this calendar year. Last year this time, we'd done about 22,000 collections. We're now up to 32,000 collections. So we've got 1,000 uh, collections a week more. Um, so people are getting more engaged, they are using the service um, and we're particularly highlighting those areas where, as I said, participation was, was low. In areas like um, uh, the west and down south, the average um, participation rate is in the high 20%, whereas last year it was in the lower 20%. Supp supplementary, uh, Madam Chair, just, just two things. Um, one, what was the participation rate in the old days, if you, if you were able to calculate it? Um, and secondly, yeah, look, I accept that um, the more that people put out, the more expensive it is to pick up. But if we are the main way of 
picking up an organic collection, isn't it better that we pick it up formally than having it fill, filling, junking up yards and, and being illegally dumped? And I, I, I kind of feel that, you know, people will create the amount of inorganic um, uh, material that they, they do and it's very hard because most people don't have tow bars, let alone trailers these days, and it's very expensive. So I, I'm just wondering whether we can be more flexible still on encouraging people just to put their stuff out because it's better that we recycle it than it's uh, dumped somewhere or left in the backyard. Yeah, I think, Mr Mayor, the issue is twofold. Number one, we will have to put the price up and we'll have to increase the, the cost of this because the more you put out, the more it costs us to, to deal with, despite the fact that people might think a lot of it <coughs> is recyclable. Sadly, the state of some of the stuff that we collect, it actually ends up in landfill and we pay for that. Secondly, if we're thinking genuinely of being a zero waste city, the circular economy should be the, the, the main priority. In other words, why are people putting out a double bed? Why isn't there actually the amount of money which is the product stewardship? That mattress should be able to go back to the manufacturer and be recycled. It's, it's able to be done. That wood should be disassembled and reassembled. All the time we're facilitating just putting junk at the bottom of your gate, as our um, Kura kids said, there is no way. We're, we're actually facilitating <coughs> that ongoing buy junk, junk it, throw it away, put it in the landfill. So I don't want to sound tough, but I guess I am. I think we need to facilitate the process that stops dumping, that supports our families through this transition to a different way of dealing with waste, but I don't think we should be enablers. <coughs> and somewhere in the middle is the right space. So I, I think the door knocking and the working with our vulnerable communities is the way that we need to do this, and we talk about that in the plan. But simply increasing and enabling greater and greater and greater piles of inorganic to be collected is not the way to go. So we, I think <coughs> we might have to take this offline. I hear what you're saying, yeah. but I... I think we need to carry on this discussion because yep, we are sure. also um, privatising the benefit to the people selling the junk and making public the cost. The ratepayers pick up the cost of all of this. And if we're to keep rates of 2.5% increase and 3.5% next year, we haven't got the money in the solid waste budget to keep funding landfilling the stuff people put at the end of their driveway. It'll be an ongoing conversation, Madam Chair. I won't, I I won't so. debate here, but can I just get a question, just to answer the, the question on um, How many are, we, are we picking up as much as we were, uh, are we picking up now as much as we were under the old system? So through the Chair, no, we're not. The, um, the participation rates um, varied, well, obviously some, some of the legacy councils didn't have the service. But, um, and the service varied actually across the region. So in uh, Legacy Waitakere, um, the participation, it was a booked system and it was paid for as well. Participation there varied between six and 9%. Um, there was never any measurement done for the areas where um, material was put out on the berm in say Auckland Central North Shore. Um, what was apparent was that a lot of that material was illegally dumped. Um, so the estimate was around 30% of actual legal um, uh, presentation of inorganic material. Um, the material that we would pick up, so we had a clear all policy before, so neat piles <coughs> became huge piles, and so um, rubble, green waste, asbestos, we would have just cleared, which we wouldn't clear now because um, it, it's, it's not material that we would collect. Uh, and also now, obviously, we can control illegal dumping on properties. Uh, I hear what you're saying, that it could pop up elsewhere. Mm -hmm. if, if I could just add one, one other thing. One of the, what the plan does say is around, um, so clearly we recognise this is, a, this is a still a fairly new service, um, and it's positive that um, participation rates are increasing. Uh, and also recovery rates are, are increasing as well. What we are looking at when we've got an opportunity next year to review the service is looking at how actually the community recycling centres can take a, a bigger role. Um, 
you know, they've got the capacity, they've got the sites, they've got the, um, the skills to recover a lot more material and potentially they could do some of those collections. And the interesting fact is that the, the likes of Waiuka and Helensville, where those sites operate, um, there is less illegal dumping in those areas than elsewhere. So I think there's some learnings there and, and some positive learnings as well. So interesting. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, look, I've probably got a number of questions, but I'm going to refine them to food waste just from, from a time perspective. So um, I want to have clarification as to why we aren't supporting an opt-out uh, uh, system for the food waste collection. Could you explain that to me, please? Uh, yep, through the chair. I, I think this was discussed throughout the, the, the LTP. So um, the... Uh, so the service is for urban areas only, so um, uh, the view was that um, the, the, the how, how we would administer that um, and, and actually how then that makes the service, um, uh, I guess, affordable, um, that it relies, similar to recycling, it relies everyone participating um, uh, rather than, a, I suppose, a user pays system. Okay, I, think, I'm not, I, I won't go down. I just, yeah. yeah. Okay, Put I'll simply, Councillor Simpson, the discussion that happened at the LTP was how would we police the opt-out system? You could write and say, I wish to opt out of the um, food scraps collection, and would we have our, um, our rubbish wardens having a look and see if you're still putting out chicken bones, um, and, you know, chicken bones and, and organic waste <coughs> in your in your collection. So we just thought it was unworkable and not sensible. Okay, so then the financial implications of that are though, that one of the reasons that um, the food waste collection was sold is that you would have a pay as you throw on your red bin, so potentially you would save money from the $114, I think it is, of the red bin, um, and have only $67 and then your $3.80 per lift. But if that red bin is going to stay as a weekly collection, it's going to be 114 plus 67, isn't it? No. No? No. no. So the, we're giving people the option of a weekly collection, but as we're finding on out west and where I live, because people are finding far more thoughtfulness in the way that they put out their bin, they're only putting it out every two or three weeks. Councillor Cooper was saying because she's got chickens, she's putting out you know, a bin once a month, particularly yeah. if you're able to remove the smelly organic component from your bin. All you should have left by the time you've taken out your recyclables and your organic matter is actually the soft plastics. Occasionally, if you've got a bit of um, stuff that can't be recycled, that's all that goes in your bin. So you save that component. So the truck will come round once a week mm -hmm. and it will pay, be pay as you throw. Yeah. Only if you put it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> no, that's right. The second, my second question is around the food waste for um, commercial. So 80% of, of that food waste is coming from businesses. So are we using, are we using, um, am I correct in saying that we're using a cost increase to drive behavioural change from those businesses who put food to landfill? Is that correct? Um, so through the chair, no, 80% of food waste that goes to landfill isn't from commercial premises. Most of it comes from households. I think the... The majority of food waste goes to landfill. Yep, I think. Um, there is a, a large amount of, of commercial food waste, but we're not looking at that in our collection service, which is just for the domestic type because right. my, my point is around, you know, what are we doing for two things around food waste from, from businesses? You know, there are some wonderful charities doing some great things. What are we doing to use the <coughs> philosophy that we do with homeless, which actually is coordinate the social services that, that support this to actually do more of that? So it's not cost that's driving is the big stick. It's actually the, the, the better good for society, I suppose. I mean, I went to a thing on Friday night, Kiwi Harvest, it's fantastic, it goes around and, and collects um, food waste from, uh, you know, restaurants and whatever and then hands that to people who, who need to eat it, it's quite, you know, happy to do that. So what are we doing around that? Now my second question is, and stuff that we do own, like our own parks, and especially, especially it's probably to, to back up Councillor Bartley, and our own parks, are we using the same, you know, separated waste systems in our council controlled parks that we're asking the domestic user to use? 
So um, <clears throat> just to answer the question around commercial organics, then yeah, the waste plan is, is very strong on focus on waste minimization. So working, so getting that message around love food, hate waste, um, and also working where we've got the resource with commercial operators. We, the food rescue is a, is a new addition to the waste plan and, and actually we've supported through our waste minimization and innovation fund, Kiwi Harvest, to, to, um, to fund an extra truck. So we're very keen to see that, that diversion before it ends up as, as waste. For, for us, it's about how we influence commercial waste and not how we necessarily get into that market. As we look at procuring processing capacity for household food waste, then there are some real opportunities which we're looking at through the procurement around actually how does that stimulate capacity and infrastructure for um, commercial organics to be treated, particularly food waste. In addition to that, um, some of the advocacy with government looking at waste levy, I suppose some of those legal controls about what can and can't go to landfill actually makes the business case more appealing for those commercial entities that are disposing of waste altogether rather than separating, particularly separating out food waste and organic. So in our own parks, are all the bins in parks going to have separate, separate um, receptacles for food waste? So can I, I think I'm just a little bit worried time-wise. I can see where you're going, Councillor Simpson. What I'd really like us to do is we're getting down into some of the operational stuff. This is our waste plan. This is what we want to achieve and what we want to, what we want to do and how we want to get there. The operational side, and I'm delighted everyone's as passionate about waste as I am, so let's, let's undertake to do some practical reporting to this committee on some of those issues. What are we doing you know, in our own organisation? What are we doing with parks? Let's have an update on love, food, hate, waste. Let's look at what are we doing board by board. Really happy to facilitate that. But the first thing we need to do is to say, what's our plan? So sorry to cut it short, but I do have a whole bunch of other speakers and we need to be a fair way along through this agenda by 12.30 because we have to break at 12.30. So see the point you're making, and they're good ones, Councillor Simpson. But we have many speakers to go. Councillor Stewart. Thank you. Just uh, picking up on what um, the Mayor Phil Goff um, said about the um, one cubic metre. We have people living in apartments, and I'm just wondering, <coughs> what are we going to be doing about the people that are living in apartments and they have nowhere to put their inorganic rubbish out? What, what, what do we do for them? Um, what we do, we, we work with the property manager, so we encourage the property manager to make one booking on behalf of all those uh, residents. And then um, because each of those blocks, I suppose, have different arrangements, um, the contractor, our, our waste collector, and the property manager work together to identify the best way of um, uh, storing that material and collecting it. So the service is still offered. Um, but it, it adds a, an added complexity and challenge. Um, but actually, probably in those cases, we, we need to be a lot more flexible with the, uh, with the one cubic metre. Okay, and just, um, just another thing. <coughs> just, I see chi China's now banned o over in Australia. They're not collecting a lot of the recycled um, rubbish. So, and I, I guess that's now happening here. So what is actually happening to the recycled rubbish that goes, the, the plastics and the, and the bottles, is that ending up in landfills like what's happening down in Thames? What, what's actually really happening with the recycled rubbish bins? Council, I think that's a really good question and I, I just want to jump in because I'm going to ask for a bit of a one-pager to be circulated to councillors on that. There's a lot of questions and certainly in the media, you know, what, what's happening in Auckland? Should we still put stuff in our recycling bins? We're in a reasonably good position, but as I mentioned, we've made that one of our key outcomes. Mm -hmm. This is a New Zealand Inc. discussion and I think New Zealand <coughs> as a whole needs to work its way through this. So rather than take the time now, I, I'd like to see that answered in a slightly longer and more detailed way. So, great question. I but just would have liked to have heard it now. If yeah, I, I just, yeah. We, and we don't necessarily have all that information available right now. 
but we can we can get that to you or get that to to all the councillors. Councillor Newman. Yeah, thank you. I've got a, a, a substantive uh, comment to make at the conclusion of the questions, but I only have one question for the officers, and that is um, how much is the um, uh, annual booked inorganic collection service per household? How much does that cost per household <coughs> as a component of rates? Yeah. <coughs> So <coughs> through the chair, with um, if you include corporate overheads, it's twenty-three dollars per um, ratepayer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Newman. Councillor Hills. Uh, thank you, Chair. It was just a quick question on the inorganics. Um, what are, are we seeing an increase in the recycled products? Do you have any figures of what we've seen since the change on actual items we're able to save and recycle and reuse compared to before? Um, yeah, th through the chair, it was it was difficult to quantify how much was recovered. Um, obviously, there are lots of stories around neighbours going through each other's piles, oh. and um, and one of the uh, so what happens now is we've got two trucks going down the street. The um, the box truck takes anything that's recyclable or reusable and goes back to a warehouse, and that's distributed. And there are 123 groups that are benefiting from that material. Um, and that can be a whole range of stuff and actually allows, so it can go to traditional charity shops or uh, op shops, but also uh, it's creating some, uh, some business opportunities for, for additional revenue uh, and some upcycling. The real difference is probably in electronic waste. So previously, a lot of TVs were smashed up on the berm for, for just a very small amount of the precious metals. Any electronic waste, particularly TVs and monitors that we collect, go back to the warehouse and then they go back to a group called Abilities on the North Shore who yep. dismantle them. And they, they, Remarkable group. Yeah, they, um, they, they employ people with, uh, with disabilities. And actually the inorganics has created about 10 additional jobs for them. Last year they dismantled around 15,000 TVs or monitors from the inorganics. So, um, so that, you know, if you think, TVs are hazardous waste, so um, that's a real plus and a positive, getting that out of the, the waste stream, but also off of the berm. Great. Thanks. Brilliant. Councillor Cooper. Um, mine was just actually, Madam Chair, I won't go into it, but if we could have an, a paper along with the others that you're talking about, about glass and the waste stream, because yep. we know that that is increasingly a problem in the ability to reuse the plastic, so i really <coughs> like to see what we're going to do, yeah. because we yeah. currently have commingled. Thank you. Thank you. I'm keeping a little list of all of the things. I think we need an operational report on yeah. the wider issues on waste. I think it's very timely. Councillor Darby. Thank you, Chair. Acknowledge uh, and thank you for the comprehensive introduction on this topic. And I acknowledge that all those that uh, sat through a very long hearing by the sounds of it. So thank you. I just want to understand um, where the biggest single owner of curbside waste bins fits into this, and that's us, and I'm not talking about the plastic ones that we, we give to our residents. It's the thousands of litter bins that we have in 100 town centres uh, and, um, and hundreds of parks, and they, our bins uh, number in the thousands. Um, so where do, where do those thousands of council bins fit into this plan? I can't quite see that acknowledgement that we have thousands of bins and they are in some ways the shop front of what, they could be the shop front of what we do. So how do they fit into this plan in terms of the goals and, and objectives? So, um, so they are, they are, yeah, I guess they are included, um, recognizing that, um, uh, that um, <coughs> it probably hasn't been a key, or litter bins hasn't been a key thing of the, of the waste plan previously. Um, uh, the, the issues that we have with, with litter generally, and particularly recycling bins on the street, is about education and awareness and people using the right bins for the right things. Um, and we do have some significant challenges around uh, contamination in recycling bins, which is why predominantly we just have litter bins out there rather than recycling bins. Um, so I probably haven't answered the question because I'm not sure how specific litter is 
in in the plan and what more we could be doing but um yeah so does litter not <coughs> feature that's because i i read it and i i yeah. mm. couldn't find it there and is it a gap it's an operational matter i yeah. councillor darby i think it's a very very good point and that was <coughs> what i was trying to say before i think the operationalizing of the plan in our own operations is what we need to come back with i mean on our own floor, on That's floor 26, mm. I kind of get my hands in that um, recycling bin and sort out the recycling. Mm. If we can't even get it right, and if I find one more plastic bottle in the in the um, rubbish Wait. bin, I'm but going I'm to scream. We need <laughs> to. I think we need to really tackle that as part of our operationalising of the plan for our own so on our own. We acknowledge other operational is oh issues right. in here, the, you know, those plastic 140-litre <coughs> curbside. This, I, I've, at the outset, I, I actually did say, how is our shopfront litter collection service going to be reflected in this? Because <coughs> that, that is about how we act. Yeah. And many cities have taken them out. They've taken them out for security reasons and never put them back in. Mm -hmm. and it's gone well. We've taken them out of regional parks, mm -hmm. and the regional parks are cleaner than the parks with bins. Mm -hmm. So yep. I, I don't think it's just an operational matter, and I just can't see it reflected, but I'll just leave it there. Yeah, I guess I, I just put out, I certainly um, take on the need for that, um, and there is certainly a piece of work that we need to do internally, because um, litter bins sits across a number of departments at the moment, from community facilities to Auckland Transport to to waste solutions, <coughs> so I think that coordinated approach is certainly something that we need to pick up. And I think, so agreeing Councillor Darby, however the decision for us to take litter bins away altogether would have to be a decision we made because it would have, it was, yeah. there was enough yeah. um, <coughs> gnashing of teeth when they were taken out of regional parks. Okay, right. I think, so I'm happy to move the uh, recommendation. The yeah, yep, no, I'll, we're coming to you. I'm just waiting for Koro, who's going to make the, to answer the question. I'll move the recommendation. Is happy there to a second. Seconded Councillor Wayne Walker. And Koro's just going to comment on your question. Kia ora koutou. Uh, just responding to Councillor Casey's question earlier, which was um, referring to the plan you'll find in the open attachments uh, and there was on page 102 uh, under I can't even find it myself it's also in an agenda it's under the CRC sorry it's 16. under the yeah. resource recovery network uh, point 89 community <coughs> recycling centers the addition there, which starts including the review of priorities, budget, including alternative funding sources, and the role of the council and other parties in the delivery of the CRCs, reflects what came out of the Section 17A review on waste. So that's been captured there too, as with a number of other things that were identified as part of that Section 17A review. So that's review. A, it's a new departure to this plan, and my question was how I can vote against that. So. Councillor Casey, it's not a new departure. What it's saying is we're reflecting the fact that as part of the decision and series of decisions that were made at that 17A meeting, the council voted to put a large sum of money aside to review the efficacy of the community recycling centres. That report has yet to be done. When that report is done, it will come back to us and the decision will be made by us. It's at that stage where you and I, who are passionate about the CRCs, will hopefully <coughs> make recommendations to keep our CRCs safe and funded in the way they're funded. This is not this is not a preemptive decision in the waste plan at all. It's simply signalling that that work is actually being done under the 17A review process. So I'm, I'm totally with you. Believe you me, this would not get through my eagle eye on this issue. As I recall, the debate was around whether we were looking at divestment or not, and that's still on the table. And that's that's what I'm objecting to. I'm, I'm not supporting this way out. <coughs> I guess I just want to be clear, this is not preempting that. What we're saying it's is that... It. No, I understand. But we have to legally include 
and we were certainly challenged by Northern Waste about putting everything that was there as part of the 17A review transparently in this waste plan. We still make the decision when the PricewaterhouseCooper report comes back to us on the efficacy of CRCs, we make that decision and then that's what I was saying at the beginning. The 17A review outcomes then go into the plan. This is in no way preempting a change to the CRCs. That decision is entirely in our hands. So what would be the method for me to vote against that part? <laughs> or do I have to vote against it in whole? I, I hear what you're saying. I'm still not supporting it. So would it be A? B. B. I, you can do what you want, yeah. Councillor Casey. I just think I, if I were you, I'd keep my powder dry for the discussion, the actual discussion on CRCs, which is a far more effective thing. You're quite entitled to vote against A. That's fine. Now, speaking to the recommendations, Councillor Newman. Uh, thank you, Chair. I've got a bit of a, I've got a substantive comment as a member of the hearings panel, uh, but I'll start with um, priority four, which uh, is the community recycling centres. It was interesting, um, and with your indulgence, Chair, it's going to take a little bit of time, but I'll try and keep it succinct. Waste Management New Zealand Limited, they did acknowledge in the hearings process that it's not always commercially viable uh, to provide services to all parts of Auckland. Uh, concurrent to that, um, there was a question as to what service they could provide because they, with a profit motive, want to be providing um, a, a service where they can extract value out of the um, received recyclables. Um, I believe that there is an urgent need for these centres and I think it starts in the south. Um, I do think that there is a need for more centres that are all purpose for recycling uh, to enable rubbish sorting, with transfer to the tip to enable education. And all of that needs to be provided uh, with low gate fees um, to lead the market. So whilst I will be voting for these recommendations, um, I don't believe, I instinctively am not sure <coughs> as to whether we, are, we have adequately provided the funding necessary through the 10 year plan for the delivery of community recycling centres. And this is apparently going to be subject to a 17A review. And it, this will need to be revisited because if these centres are to be delivered, they are going to need to be delivered and properly funded. Uh, and I think that um, my, my suggestion to Councillor Casey is if she wants to drive that debate it's to participate um, in that conversation as part of the 17A review, because that will need to be part of a future conversation about funding, I suspect. Chair, with respect to priority five, which is set out on page 35 of attachment B, um, I want to acknowledge um, you, Chair, as the, uh, as the chair of that hearings panel and the other um, panel members, because the weekly household curbside rubbish collection service, in my view, is absolutely vital and it remains essential for many families throughout the Auckland region. Um, and, and I sought to achieve that modification action as set out on page 36 and I want to acknowledge, um, Chair, with your indulgence on that, um, I think that before we even contemplate moving to a fortnightly curbside collection service, we will need to ensure that we're achieving an aggregate reduction not only at a region-wide level but also importantly across all parts of the region. Now look, I support a rate-based scheme, I was out, I would be outvoted four to one on the, around that hearings panel I suspect. Um, I listened carefully to what the Mayor said in relation to the annual curbside and organic rubbish collection service, I agree with him. I agree with um, His Worship, um, the need to ensure um, the most accessible service which um, is designed to provide maximum convenient to households is critical and I'm not sure that we have landed that and indeed a lot of the submitters weren't sure that we landed that either. Um, so I believe that, there, that that too will need to be subject to a, of a debate in the future. Moving forward Chair with respect to priority six which is addressed on pages 37 and 38 and this deals with curbside food scraps collection. Um, I want to acknowledge the concern that Councillor Simpson raised. Um, 
look, the, the service has actually started in Papakura and, and I want to see how successful that service has been. It's only a few months old before there is further consideration as to how it's working and whether that represents value for money. Maybe that service does need to be changed in the future, for example, to consider a combination of food waste and green waste. I don't know. But I think that that is a live debate, Councillor Simpson, and, and I'm certainly um, looking for information about how that is working in the context of Papakura. Finally, Chair, um, my last comments um, relate to the other issues which are dealt with um, in the report uh, with respect to clean fills and managed fills. Um, Council say is I support um, a plan change. I think that's a, an important conversation, not a conversation for this, but that is a conversation to be had. Um, really delighted that um, a consent for, to operate a clean fill at, in Karaka has been withdrawn, um, but I think that there does need to be appropriate regulation. That's a matter for uh, the bylaws and the plans and places and waste solutions team collectively moving forward. The final thing I'll say, Chair, is that there is a reference in the in the hearings report to litter and illegal dumping um, seeking to support as a way forward local board funding to try and address some of these things in the future. My uh, instinct <coughs> is that local boards funding litter um, eradication and responses to illegal dumping is probably not appropriate. These are matters that need to be addressed as a regional resourcing matter. Um, and so um, that will need to be a matter that's considered uh, around this table as we move forward to a future annual plan debate. Um, but Chair, um, whilst I don't agree with everything that's in here, I feel compelled as a member of that hearings panel uh, to vote for the recommendations, but in so doing I hope that I've foreshadowed what I'm going to be discussing in the future because I do think there are matters here that remain live and will need to be subject to future debate and consideration around resourcing. Thank you. And thank you for your comment, particularly on the community recycling centres. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Oh, thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a, a couple of points that I wanted to pick up. Um, on the priority actions on product stewardship, just to draw to um, councillors' attention that we have raised this with the Associate Minister of Education and Minister of Conservation, Eugenie Sage. Um, uh, picking up James Brown's comments about the tyres, because he and I live in a similar area, we picked up 1,250 tyres in one road, 1,250 in Twilight Road, and it cost about 20,000 to do it, because we literally, as I think you suggested in your opening comments, Madam Chair, we had to abseil down and close the road. And why wouldn't it make sense to pay a couple of dollars when you purchase the tyre so you can return it free to, a, uh, to the pl people that supplied it to you so that it can be recycled? And with the opening of the new recycling plant now out at Wirree that Councillor Cooper and I attended, uh, we can deal with the tyres. They can be reutilised for fuel, for cement plants, etc. So product stewardship really does have to be at the in terms of prevention, needs to be at the top of our list and container deposit schemes. So I think, Madam Chair, you'll probably correct me, but where they've got container deposit scheme, schemes, it's about an 80 or 90 per cent recycling, whereas we're doing 40 per cent. So if we are going to build the fence at the top of the cliff, um, product stewardship's a really good idea. We've raised that with government. We need to keep pushing it. Can I, just on my second and last point, pick up Councillor Stewart's point, which um, is about the closure of the Chinese market to our recycling. Effectively, what that means is that much of the recycling that was taking place, not only in Auckland through Visi, but right around the country, is now going to become uneconomic. And we raised that with Eugenie Sage as well, because it doesn't make sense for Auckland to try to find an independent solution to that problem. We need to work with all of the other councils and the central government, and the minister at our suggestion is setting up a working party so that we can come together and work out what we do with what we used to just market straight into China. When China pulled out of the market, uh, the value, the, the market value of that, those recyclables just collapsed. So we do have to find a solution, and it makes sense to do that 
collectively across the country and not just separately uh, as Aucklanders. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Anyone else wishing to speak to the recommendation? Councillor Simpson and then Councillor Cooper. So, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm really conflicted on this. I really am. You know, there's, there's, the, there's a part of me that actually desperately wants to support it because there's much in it that is good. Much in it that is good for Auckland and, in fact, you know, planet and New Zealand and everything else. But I suppose my, my problem with some of it is is some of the detail I have really concerns around. And, and therefore, if I support the, if support where it is, I'm actually carte blanche potentially supporting some things that I still think there is uh, much I need to know about. And, and food waste is definitely one of those things. <coughs> so um, I, I will vote against, but I do want it on public record that actually, you know, as I said, the theory and much about this is, is really good. But um, the, the operational delivery, the devil is in the detail. You know, my ward has got some concerns from, from about illegal dumping. They've got concerns about the, inorg the new inorganic collection. They have obviously fed back on the LTP. They've got concerns around that. So I feel that because of those concerns, I can't sort of just cut lunch support. But I know that there will be further discussions. And I think, you know, potentially we're on the right path. But... I'm concerned about some of the detail. I'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I guess sitting through all the submission, people being, speaking to their submissions, I think what I got out of it was that people are calling for a change. And like anything big and regional or national, you, you know, it is a step change. And if we're just going to tinker, I think that's a waste of a lot of people's energy that did put in submissions and. I think, as you said earlier, um, this is the time where people are ready, and there will be there will be people that have individual issues for their house, and we've dealt with those really well when we changed to the two bin system in Waitakere and North Shore. Um, for the most part, people took it up, but operationally, our staff here were fantastically responsive and little bespoke solutions for certain streets or places or. You know, you could ring up and go, this this was a bit of a glitch, here's this happened. And our staff would be out there um, sorting it out until things bedded in. And so I have a lot of faith in the operational delivery of this, that we haven't got robots in our staff. We've actually got people, actually, Parul's not here, but our Waste Solutions Manager, once a man called me very angry in the weekend, and I actually called Parul, and she said, I'm going to bring my trailer, and I'm going to come and get it right now. And I said... Paul, you can't do that. She said, no, we've got to sort these things out and find yeah. proper solutions. But in the meantime, um, and she, and so that's the sort of lengths. And I don't expect that as, you know, that's a pretty high standard. But I think what I'm saying is we've got some pretty smart people who do, who are families themselves and have to deal with their own waste um, and understand this probably a lot more than we do. So I've got a lot of... Um, faith in the fact that we can work through the operational issues and we will f come up against little bits and pieces and we'll deal with them. Um, we had a challenge from our tamariki, our, our rangatahi at Hwani Waititi there, and I think we're actually letting them and people a lot younger than us, because we're not really designing this for us, we're designing it for the future. If we don't take up these challenges, and they will be, they will be tricky, but I think what we've got to do is just do it and work it out as we go along. And I think we can do that. So I'm, I'm supporting this, um, along with a lot of the agencies like Fair Food and all of those other people that came to us that said we can do it and take that leap of faith. But it is a managed leap of faith and it's a managed risk that we're dealing with. So um, I, I commend this to the other councillors, the, the, the council, the governing body, to support it. Um, even if you might have small reservations that are around the edges, that the main theme of this is a step change to making sure people are mindful about their waste instead of, um, as our young people said, there is no away. Um, we have to be mindful in our everyday lives about where this waste goes and seeing it as a resource rather than rubbish. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Councillor Stewart. 
Can you use these, these slides? I'll just both. Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay. Just, um, I'm probably going to be like Desley, I'm not going to support this, but one of the things that I, I like um, Councillor um, Cooper, um, Peruto actually has been really, really wonderful. I can remember on about the 5th of uh, June, uh, January rather, when we had that king tide in the, in the heavy rain, people in my community, there was one family, they had a waste bin that had a whole lot of disposable nappies in them <coughs> and the weight, the weight of the rain actually made the lifting of the bin too heavy so the contractor decided not to collect and it was, it was over a long weekend and this person actually had a family member who had a disability and so needed to have these disposable nappies. We've actually got a lot of people now living in our community that are, we've got an ageing com um, community um, population. Um, so this is, this is just an area, there's, there's a lot of things that I don't think we've really thought through and we don't really know what we're going to do. And that's just one little example that um, I think we haven't thought about and it, you, you might think it's funny, but it's not, it's not actually funny because there are a lot of people out there that do have family members that have disabilities and they do need to get rid of the disposable nappy some, somewhere in the weight of them, the sheer weight of them, and uh, this is going to be very, very expensive for them. So th this is just something that I think we have to look at. So you might think I'm being a bit funny, but I'm, 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 I'm being sincere. No. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stewart. You are absolutely being sincere, as you always are, and you'll note and it was slide eight, sanitary waste is absolutely an issue. So we heard um, a couple of submissions raising exactly the points that you raised, and that's why we've um, strengthened that, that part of the plan to deal with exactly that. With an ageing population, it's a big issue. And Councillor Cooper, who most people know, was a registered nurse and has a lot of experience in this area having run um, rest homes raised this issue and certainly drove the fact that this needed to be taken more seriously. So your point is well made. Right, I think that might be all the speakers. I'm going to put the recommendation. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? No. So can Councillor Stewart and Councillor Simpson wish their votes recorded. We'll do that. And can I just, um, in saying and, thank and you. And I've also voted oh, against. And Thank you. Well done, um, well done, I just sorry. again want to thank the panel, the wonderful member Wilcox and our staff who go above and beyond the call of duty on this important issue. Thank you very much. We have a waste plan, which is always a good thing. Now we just need to make some of that operational work happen. Okay, so let's move on to item 10.